If you're an author or plan to be one, get excited because this podcast is for you. Book Marketing Mentors is the only podcast dedicated to helping you successfully market and sell your book. If you're ready for empowering conversations with successful marketing mavens, then grab a coffee or tea and listen in to your host, international best-selling author, Susan Friedman. Welcome to Book Marketing Mentors, the weekly podcast where you learn proven strategies, tools, ideas, and tips from the masters. Every week, I introduce you to a marketing master who will share their expertise to help you market and sell more books. Today, my special guest, all the way from Oahu, Hawaii, is Pua Pakeli. She's a website and online course designer and the owner of Pulena Digital Design. Since 2014, she's been designing website and online courses for entrepreneurs and small businesses. With a master's in business administration, 20 years of work experience from local startups to multinational corporations, and a background in web and graphic design, branding and marketing, Pua weaves her diverse professional experiences into the strategic approach and experience she provides for her clients. Pooh, what an absolute pleasure it is to welcome you to the show. And thank you for being this week's guest expert and mentor. I'm so thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for having me and for that wonderful introduction. Well, of course, it's a good one. You wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice. And I love it that you know, I bring people from so many diverse backgrounds. And the fact that you're in Hawaii, which I think might be a first, we've had people from Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Europe, but I'm not sure that we've had Hawaii before. So, hey, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <A> double welcome. <laughs> This digital online world makes the entire globe feel very small and connected, which is really nice. It is. And I know that that's something that you help your clients do through websites, through your online course design. Let's first start with websites, because one of the questions that I often get from my authors is, should I have a book website or an author website? If you were to answer that question, what would you tell my authors? Yeah, this is a great question. And I can absolutely understand where the question is coming from, because the thing that you want to put out into the world is the book. It would make sense, I think, to think that we want people to find the book. That's the goal, right? But my answer would actually be to have an author website with a page for the book or pages that are highlighting different sections or a connecting to different target audiences through the author website. And the reason for that is as consumers, as humans who are looking for solutions, we want to connect with the person behind the product, no matter what it is. If it's a book, a course, you know, if you're selling physical products, if you're selling services, most likely whatever it is that you've written about or whatever it is that you do exists in some form elsewhere. So what we want is to give people enough of a glimpse into who we are as people, our experiences, our knowledge, our expertise, our passion, our proven track record that we can actually solve this problem and then allow them to decide to opt into the thing. In this case, opting into purchasing the book, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm thrilled that you did say that because my answer is exactly as you said it, is that people are buying the person. Mm -hmm. And the book is a vehicle. And the book is hopefully a solution or within the book is a solution to the person's problem or challenge. So yes, I mean, they want to know, like, and trust you. And they're going to get some of that through you and learning more about you through your website. I mean, I went onto your website before you and I spoke and I was like, yes, I've got a good <laughs> feel for her and she looks friendly. However, my interaction with you, you know, on a more personal level 
was much more enlightening, which I didn't get from the website. However nice you looked and however fabulous your services looked, it's having that interaction between two people that makes a whole difference. So yes, I love that you said that. And because obviously I'm a little biased, we're all about authors becoming experts in their industry and a website can brand you in that way. However, I know that one of the things you often say to your clients is that you don't have to have a website to get started. Why would you say that? Yeah, this is a question that I say it a lot. I'm like, you don't need a website. And they go, don't you build websites? Isn't that what you're selling every day? (laughs) And there are a few reasons why I say and believe this. And it is really a great catchphrase for, you know, grabbing attention and all of that. But it's really true. And I'll start from the very sort of foundational level of this. Having a website is going to essentially be the digital reflection of your business. Before you invest in a website, it is crucial to have clarity and alignment around who you are, what you do, who you serve. Without those things, your website will be a very confusing place. If you're a newer entrepreneur, obviously, if you've written a book, you have some pretty solid clarity around all of these things. And so for somebody who is in the space where they're like, okay, check, I know all of these things. I have my book. I'm ready for a digital presence. What people are actually looking for right now in 2022 isn't actually a website. It's a funnel. And traditionally, websites have you know a homepage, about page, contact page, services page. That's very useful. And I'm not saying that you don't ever need that. But for the promotion of something like a book, what we're looking for is a way to attract your ideal target audience to a place where they can then go on a journey and take an action, right? They're going to land somewhere, which is why it's called a landing page. They can read more about you. They can read more about the transformation that they may expect to experience in your book and your teachings, and then lead them to a place where they can then purchase or acquire the book. There are tons of organizations out there at this point who are simply running traffic to funnels that may or may not be connected to an actual traditional website. And so if that's something that is sounding like it's resonating with someone, like also feeling like a website might be a daunting thing to take on, know that you can really successfully promote yourself, your business, your book through a really simple landing page, you know, an opt-in form, and then a purchase page that leads them to the next step of whatever that looks like to work with you. And that's fascinating to know that because I know that many authors hold themselves back and say, well, I can't do anything because I don't have a website yet. Yes. And And that is something that I'm so glad you said that because A, as I just said, you don't need the full-blown website, but also there's on the flip side, once somebody has a website, whether they've done it themselves or they've hired somebody to do it for them. There's the expectation that, okay, I have my website. So I, the sales are going to come. The people are going to come now. They're just going to find me magically. <laughs> that is just not true anymore. You know, there's a lot that goes into the promotion side of having a digital presence. And we can boost your search engine optimization to a point where people could potentially find you if they Googled you. But There is work to be done after the website is built. And so if you're just waiting for the website and then you're like, okay, cool, it's done. I'm done. This is it. Here we go. That's also a really common misconception. So even more so keeping it really simple and just creating the minimum pages and funnels that you'll need in order to begin the promotion process. If I'm understanding you correctly, you saying that maybe not a fully fledged website is necessary, but just a landing page, which has some kind of opt-in opportunity for potential clients to just get on your mailing list. And then you can promote to them um, or just 
send them interesting information, send them a, you know, a link to your podcast or to a recording. You know, let's say after this one is done, I'm going to send you the episode and hopefully you can promote it to your audience in the same way our listeners could be doing that as well. I know that another thing that you do so well and your expertise is in creating online courses. Talk to us about that because a book has so many components that invite you potentially to create more. You can repurpose it. And I know that online courses are a way to do that. Talk to us more about that. And how would you even go about the process? Absolutely. Yeah. Authors are one of my favorite types of clients to work with because they've already created their course. If their book content is you know, inspiring enough to them that they'd like to then create a course around that, I encourage anybody who's written a book to at least consider turning the book content into a course. And what I love to do is allow them to sort of play back and forth with each other. If it's possible to have the book, maybe you're doing another version of it next year, and you can guide people towards the course in the book. There's a book that I love and the framework that I like to follow when I build sites for other people is the Story Brand Framework by Donald Miller. Throughout his the book is, I believe it's called Building a Brand Story or Building a Story Brand. He Every chapter guides you back to his online resources that are free. If I'm reading the book, I'm getting a certain level of knowledge that I can then take action on if I have like, you know, a notebook with me or if I'm reading it as I'm updating my pages or something like that. But then he added a, another layer of support by providing this digital space. So for him, it's you know an interactive worksheet. And so I've seen a lot of authors who will sort of give similar but deeper information in the course. And as you mentioned before, people interact in different ways. So if I had video of myself on my website, which I highly encourage people to do, you would probably get even better of a feeling for my personality, for who I am. That's true also in a course. So while I can read the words that you've written when I read your book, I can then jump into your course and I can say like, oh my gosh, the author is speaking directly to me. And it's a very personal feel as you walk through what's essentially the same content. The other thing is people learn in different ways. If I am actually more of a visual learner, I might get a lot more and experience a deeper transformation if I absorb the content from a course, even if it's audio, video, whatever that might be, than if I read a book and then other people may have the opposite experience. And the third thing is I absolutely love the sort of doubling up on the promotional potential of this. Oftentimes, the authors that I've worked with, their books are designed to be sort of like a lower ticket introduction to their suite of services. So maybe it's a $10 or $15 book. Then you can say, hey, if you buy this book, you get access to my course for free and vice versa. Hey, if you are interested in opting into this course, I'll send you a copy of my book for free or you know, free plus shipping. And it can be a really, really awesome bonus and get people really jazzed up about just how transformational your services can be. And if we think about this, like as entrepreneurs, most of us have gotten into this industry because we want to solve a problem, because we want to help people. We want to make this world a better place. And so what a lot of us spend time doing is ironing out our ecosystem, right? Do we have a free offer? Do we have a low ticket offer? Do we have a high ticket offer? How do people get from one to the other? How do we meet people where they're at? So if you have a book and a course, you're able to serve an audience with that sort of low to medium ticket offer that can really provide amazing transformation, but also gives them a taste of what that bigger package might look like if they want to continue working with you. 
oh, such gems. I'm like <laughs> writing down furiously. It's like, okay, okay, which road do we go down? So number one, I was certified as a story brand guide. So oh, awesome. you are talking to the converted here. And so, <laughs> yes, I absolutely love Don Miller's, your, his whole formula. It's so simple. It really is just a joy to learn that whole process. Video, yes, I know that video speaks volumes when you see somebody and I've shied away from it for so long and I'm like, nah, you know, now we're on Zoom all the time. It's like, I can manage video. So you're absolutely right, right is getting into that video, seeing you. But then the whole idea of bundling everything is I, I often tell my uh, authors because they say, oh, I want a workbook. I want to do a course. And I said, you charge $19.95 or $19.99 for a book, or if it's a hardcover, $24.95 or $29.99. And a workbook, you can actually charge $50, $100 for. People will pay more mm -hmm. for a workbook, which is the funniest thing than they will for a book, whereas a workbook could be just for you to fill out. Right. You know? But it's a workbook. It has a whole different dimension to it. But as you say, to go along with a course and to bundle the book and the workbook and, you know, a course, it's like, wow, this is magic now. So instead of $19.95, you can do $195. <laughs> right. Instead, you can really sort of capitalize more on it because there's more value. People perceive Let's put it this way. People perceive that there's more value in a course than just reading the book. Plus, people buy books, but they don't always read them. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that you said perceived value because, again, you've already created the content. You've done all the hard work. And now it's just a matter of it's like if you're reading your book to put on Audible, you're just regurgitating the information but it's you. And this is information that you are passionate about, that you have put into the written word that you then get to talk about and share about. And that that will naturally sort of provide not more depth, but depth in a different way than you provided as you sort of authored your book. And the other thing that I forgot to mention is people share books. So if you have in your book a link. Hey, you bought this book. I'm so excited to gift you access to my course. That's one person that bought the book and one person that's opting into your course, which means that that's one person on your email list. And if that one person says, oh my God, this was such an amazing book. Hey, friend who wants to go into business, here's a book on you know how to start your business. So then that's one book and two opt-ins and two people in your course and two potential leads there is a major ripple effect that comes from that. It's just a really powerful partnership between a course and a book that's, you know, the possibilities are endless. Oh, yes. And the funny thing too, is you were talking about audiobooks, And again, I encourage authors to, if they can do it, is to absolutely have an audio book because people are consuming books via audio and it doesn't mean that they won't buy a printed copy or the ebook version. I mean, I sometimes buy all three the audio, the ebook, and the hardcover or softcover. They all serve different purposes for me. And it's funny because an audiobook, which you're reading the book as is, you pay $19.95 for the book, but the audio, you can charge $39 for the book. You know, you look at the prices on Audible, and you'll see that they're so much higher. So it's really interesting, all these mm -hmm. different variations that people are buying at different price ranges, and they're willing to do to consume your information. Because at the end of the day, that's what they're doing. They're consuming your information and hoping that you have a solution to their challenge, whatever exactly. that might be. Oh, this is fascinating. It really is. And you mentioned the word transform. And you talk about on your website that courses transform. Talk to us more about that whole process because it's a great concept. And how do you put it into practice? 
Absolutely. Yeah. That was very intentional language that I used in my website. And it took me a bit to get there. I was, as I would work with clients and we'd talk about how do my clients find success in my course or what's the best way to deliver my course so that they can see results. And so it was, you know, results-based courses or results focused and nothing sat well with me until I landed on the word transformational and transform because that's what we're doing. It doesn't really matter if you are a, an author, a course creator, a coach, if you have a physical product, you're providing a transformation, a solution. You're creating ease for someone's life. So when we think about transformation and story brand comes back here because I guide all of my clients to think about creating a framework for their content, much like you probably guide people to create the chapters of their book to follow that sort of story-like trajectory where the client, the person who's consuming the information, they are the hero. It's not you. So how do we guide them through this hero's journey where they are going to get really excited at first and say, oh my God, I have this problem. I found this person. I went to their website. They look amazing. I really feel connected to their energy. And so I opted into this thing and now they're going to solve all my problems and I'm so excited. And then they actually get into it and they hit some roadblocks, maybe some sticking points. We work through things and the transformation at the end is much like the hero's journey, something that they do themselves with all of the guidance and all of the knowledge that they have absorbed through your book, your course, your service, they then get to achieve that transformation for themselves. And that is the foundation of the framework that we want to craft for our online courses. So it is really transformation-based courses. And that's something that after we started implementing it in that way, not only did our clients feel more excited to deliver the content, deliver the information, but they actually had higher retention rates. So when you have an online course and I use Kajabi for a lot of our clients and for everything that I do, and you can see in the back end how many people have gone through the course and like the percentage of completion that each person has. And our clients have shared with us that more people went through the course because they're invested in their own story. It's almost like entertainment where, you know, when you're watching something and you get sort of sucked into the story and they then get to write their story. And I know this sounds a little bit like intangible, but just that little shift from providing a results-based course to providing a transformation-based course through framework that mirrors a story has changed everything for our clients. It took me a long time to understand this whole principle of the client being the hero. I know that that was drummed into us when we did the story brand right. certification. It's like your client is the hero, not you. And you go mm -hmm. to so many speaker websites and it's all about oh, I do this and I do that. Sometimes now I'm frightened to use the word I because I'm like, no, it's about you. It's right. not about I, <laughs> me. It's so, so important to remember that they are the hero and mm -hmm. you are the guide. And when you get that in the right proportion, you're absolutely right. And the course then is focused on them and their journey because you hit upon something completing a course because so many people, and I've done it myself, so I'm speaking from experience, I purchase a course, but maybe I start it, I get 5%, 20% through it, and then something else comes up and it gets in the way and I forget to finish the course. <laughs> totally. But if there's more investment in the course in completing it, then yes. I just love that concept. I mean, is there a quick little something, I mean, in the framework that allows people to create a course that gets finished? You know, I mean, just following the idea of, honestly, I feel like it's weird to say it because it's not mine, but if you are able to create a course framework around the story brand framework, or at least just 
the timeline of a story and understanding that the beginning must be about getting to know the hero. And that's the hero either getting to know themselves, the client getting to know themselves. Where are they currently? What is it that they're struggling with? Why are they here? And how can they feel confident and comfortable and supported by you as the guide? So it must start there. It can't dive right into the solution or you're going to lose people because they don't yet have that foundation of comfort or understanding or awareness of where they're at in order for them to achieve the transformation. And I would say along the way, collect data. This is great for showcasing ROI, return on investment. Where are they at the beginning? And can they quantify and qualify that to you, maybe in like a form or a short interview or a call, then guiding them from where they're at and being able to like, in your words, explain how they may be feeling is a really comforting thing. So if you do you know, any sort of market research on your target audience, you can begin to use the words that they use. So for example, in like the fitness world, maybe you're a bodybuilder. And so you're like, yeah, you know, so if you work with me, I can uh, help you to gain lean muscle mass. And then someone's like, I don't know what lean muscle mass is, but I just want to get healthy and and make my muscles bigger. (laughs) So, you know, this is a terrible example, but then in the first few modules, you can say, you know, I, you may be wanting to make your muscles bigger. And it sounds crazy to you because this is your world and you know, the terminology, but all they want to know is that you understand where they're at going from there, providing a step-by-step frameworks, five steps to becoming an author, seven steps to marketing your first book, something that they can almost sort of check off. They're like, okay, cool. I'm on step three. I'm getting ready for step four. The end is in sight, right? So really defining what that process looks like and giving them guidance along the way, step-by-step. Have you done these things? How are you feeling? Let's check in. And understanding as you collect data, where are the points along the way that people get stuck? For me, my clients, building the website always is smoother than when we get to the course building, because that's where a lot of limiting beliefs, imposter syndrome starts to come up. So those are the things that we want to make sure that we really focus on when it comes time to creating the course content or even just putting the course together and putting it out into the world. And we both know Paul Larson, who is the imposter syndrome. You know, that's something that he guides his clients on how to work with. So I've learned a lot from him and been able to weave that into the guidance that we provide for our clients. Again, the transformation is what they, they do that at the end. So the fact that they are able to put a course together based on our guidance, put it out into the world, that's their transformation when they work with us. And some don't transform for whatever reason. So as you said, you know, you have not made it through online courses. I have not made it through online courses. And as the course creator, that's data for me. Were you not my ideal client? What stopped you? And at what point did you stop? You know, and if you have the ability to ask those questions to those people who didn't actually finish or who may still be stuck, that's really valuable data for you to begin to then tweak and massage your framework in a way that can support a larger group of people. Wow. So much, so much (laughs) wisdom there. I'm so sorry. That's all right. That's all right. We love it when people go off on tangents, especially (laughs) when it's so rich in gold, gems. So Pua, help our listeners find out how they can even get hold of you because I'm sure they want to. So take it away. Tell us how they can contact you. I believe you also have a free giveaway for them. Let's hear it. Yes, definitely. Everything that you will need is on my website, puelena.com. You know, you can contact me there. There's a contact form. You can find our social media channels. And I would love to provide a, so I'm going to call it a weekly planner, but I do want to preface this by saying it's not actually like a calendar. So I don't want you to expect, you know, days of the week or, you know, months of the year. What this is really is a weekly guide. It is designed to help you stay in alignment with your vision, your goals, the things that bring you joy, 
And the reason why are you giving a planner away? You're a a website designer. (laughs) And we were talking a little bit about this before we, we hit record today. A lot of us have goals to create things like courses, to write books, to have a podcast. And all of these things are things that can really fill our cups and fuel us and fuel our creativity and provide new ways for people to work with us and learn about us, but they are not super urgent. And so they often get pushed off to next week and the next week and the next week, and then they never happen. This planner is designed to help you to identify what those things are and then create the time for yourself to actually make them happen. So it's a essentially a series of really high quality questions that you can ask yourself every week. I highly recommend putting, you know, 30 to 60 minutes in your calendar at the beginning of each week to work through this process. And the very beginning of the planner is actually a big vision section. And you can do that every, you know, three or four months. I like to do it quarterly just to sort of realign with that big vision that you may have. And if it has shifted in the last couple of months, you can then shift your weekly actions and the things that you have going on for your week in alignment with that new vision that may have shifted over the past few months. So, oh, and that is at puelena.com slash planner. Fantastic. And what I will do, I'm going to put all that information in the show notes so that people can uh, download it straight from the show notes. That's fabulous. Pua, if you would to leave our listeners with a golden nugget, I know you've given us so much, <laughs> but I know that just a drop more of your wisdom that you could share with us, what would that be? Yeah, absolutely. You know, if this is something that's resonating with you and you're feeling drawn to providing your expertise, your knowledge, your experience in something like a book or a course, I really encourage you to take action and put perfection on the side. I have worked with a lot of people who always want to redo their course content. Okay, I'll put it out there, but I have to redo this module and redo that lesson. And I would say, take your phone, prop it up on your desk and hit record and just begin creating content because people are out there really, really, really suffering because they don't have whatever it is that you're teaching, whatever expertise, knowledge, experience that you have can really, really help them. And the sooner we can get that into the world and into the hands of people that need it, the sooner this world is going to start to heal. And we as entrepreneurs have so much more power to heal the world than we even realize. So, you know, I encourage you to just maybe look your fears in the face and just hit record today, record one three minute video, see how that feels watch it back, share it with somebody, and then take the steps that you need to package it up and put it out into the world. Fantastic. Well, that's more than just a little drop. <laughs> that was that was like a fountain. Pua, you've been amazing. Thank you so much for sharing all this great wisdom. And thank you all for taking time out of your precious day to listen to this interview. And I sincerely hope that it sparks some ideas you can use to sell more books. Here's wishing you much book and author marketing success. The time is now to take action and finally build your book selling empire. And the great news is that Susan is here to help you. Visit bookmarketingmentors.com and sign up for a free 15 minute book marketing strategy session with Susan. She'll help you discover your first steps to marketing and selling your book. Only those who take action are rewarded. So visit bookmarketingmentors.com and we'll see you again next week.